Hey, what's up guys? Welcome to Quick Tech Tips and Reviews. My name is Tony and with this channel we bring you guys a variety of tech related content. If this is your first time here, be sure to subscribe and hit that little bell down below so that you're alerted to when new content is being released. In today's video we're going to talk about the difference between local adoption and layer 3 adoption. Alright guys, so at the time of the recording of this video, we are in day 17 of the No Shave November campaign, and I know the beard is starting to look pretty ratty, but it's for a really great cause, so help me support the cause by using my Amazon affiliate links. All earnings from the Amazon affiliate links during the month of November will be added to my own personal donation uh, to a cancer charity. Now, today we're going to talk about the differences between local adoption and layer 3 adoption. I'm going to show you and talk about this using several different examples. Let's get to the first example, local adoption. So in this first example, we're talking about local adoption, which basically means all of the devices are on the same local network as the Unify controller. You can see in the diagram, the router, the computer, the controller are all on a 192 network. We're going to adopt the Unify switch into that network. So let's jump over to our Unify controller and just disregard the USG that's disconnected. A lot of times in the lab I'm testing different things and this was connected at one point in time. So basically here in the Unify controller we're on the devices tab and when I plug in the US8 switch after it boots up and gets an address from the DHCP controller it should automatically be discovered on the local network and appear here for adoption. So let me step away from the uh, camera for a second, get the switch plugged in, and once it boots up, it should show up here. So I'll be right back. I also want to mention that the uh, US860 watt switch is in factory default um, state so that it can be adopted to a controller. Okay, so there's the switch. It's in a pending adoption state. I had to do nothing about telling it where the controller was. It automatically found it by auto discovery because it's on the same network. So at this point, if I wanted to adopt this switch to this controller, I would just have to hit the adopt button over here in the right side of the screen. However, what happens in a situation where the controller is on, let's say, a different network, a different VLAN, than the device we're trying to adopt. Well, let's take a look at that in example two. So in this example, we're looking at a layer three adoption scenario where the controller lives on a network that's different from the devices. Unlike local adoption, where the devices start up, get a DHCP address, and automatically find the controller via auto discovery, on a layer three scenario, it's a little different. We have to tell the devices where that controller resides and that's called layer three adoption. In the Unify world, we have to use an inform URL to tell those devices what network the controller is residing on. Now, that can be done a couple of different ways. It could be done using the UBNT discovery tool, which can be a plugin for the Chrome browser. It could be done through SSH using the set inform command. And you guys have seen me do both of those scenarios in previous videos. So in this example, we're gonna talk about how to inform the devices where the controller lives via an option called DHCP option 43. If you look at the screen at the diagram, ports three and four are switch ports on the 192 network. And you can see I have the controller, the cloud key, and my computer on that 192 network. And then either one, I made another network, a separate network, a 10 network, and that's the port where we're gonna plug in the Unify switch. In fact, it is plugged in already. And once we get to the um, Unify controller, you're going to see that it's not showing up. In fact, let's do that now. Okay, so real quick, we're in the edge router here. And here's switch zero. We have ports three and four connected. And then here's ETH1 on the 10 network. If we go over to the services tab, you'll see I have a DHCP server for the uh, Switch Zero network and a DHCP server for the ETH1 network. If we hop over to the Unify controller, the only thing we have listed in that devices uh, tab is that USG that we talked about earlier in the video too, and just disregard that. 
So if I do a refresh, you can see that the only thing that shows up is that disconnected USG. Now, the switch is connected to ETH1 as you can see in this video. However, it's not showing up because it doesn't know where the controller is living. So that being said, let's use option DHCP option 43. And we're gonna do that by coming over to the services tab in the edge router. We're gonna go into the LAN2 10 network and we're going to view details. And in the DHCP uh, scope here, we're just going to add the IP address in the unified controller field. So the cloud key is located at 192.168.1.2. So we'll save that. And the next thing we have to do is reboot the unify switch so that it initiates another DHCP request and at the same time should get this information sent to it as well as to where the controller lives. And if all goes well, after the switch is booted up, it should appear here uh, ready for adoption. So I'm going to cut the video, restart the switch because the switch takes a few minutes to start up. And once the switch is actually booted up, uh, we should see it appear here shortly thereafter. So I'll be right back. Let me reboot that switch. All right, guys. So I just rebooted the switch. Like I said, it's going to take a couple of minutes to reboot. So while we're waiting, just let me remind you guys again to please use the Amazon affiliate links this month, uh, especially the month of November. All the money earned during the month of November from my Amazon affiliate links will be added to a personal donation that I'm going to make to a cancer charity um, in support of my No Shave November campaign. So that being said, I really appreciate you guys using my links all year long. Uh, however, this month it's um, a really great cause. So if you can, especially with Black Friday coming up, or being Black Friday weekend, actually, I should say by the time this video is put out. Um, it would be very helpful and it would be very appreciated if you can support the No Shave November. Now, that being said, again, while we're waiting, let me do a refresh, but the switch is not fully booted up just yet. Yeah, no, it's not ready yet. Um, while we're waiting, in the next scenario, after we talk about... Um, layer three adoption using DHCP option 43. In the next scenario, Ed, there you go, the um, switch just showed up. We're going to talk about um, using layer three adoption with a cloud-based controller. So we'll talk about that and we'll be using uh, DNS resolution in that example. So uh, let's get back to this segment though. So the switch just showed up. It's got a pending adoption status. And if you see here, it's on the 10.0.0 network and it has an IP address of dot 50. So like the first segment, if we were wanted to go ahead and adopt at this point, we would just simply come over to the right side and issue the adopt command to adopt the switch to the controller um, on this other network. So that being said, I gave you a little insight to what uh, example number three is going to be about. So this was layer three adoption using DHCP option 43, which is a good option for, you know, smaller networks. However, if you're going to get into uh, managing larger networks, you might want to consider the next option. Example number three, let's get to it. All right, guys. So in this third and final example, we're looking at layer three adoption using a cloud hosted controller. So as you can see, I have my network here and then connected to the internet connected to a DigitalOcean cloud-based controller. In this case, we're gonna use DNS resolution to tell the device, the Unify switch in this case on my network, where the controller is located in the cloud. And I'm going to do that using a FQDN or a fully qualified domain name. And you gotta have all that set, all that DNS set up on the back end, but just so you understand what that means, you gotta take your domain, so, yourcompany.com and point that domain using DNS to the public IP address of your cloud hosted controller. So that's a topic maybe for another video, but that's what has to be set up in the background in order for this scenario to work. So again, we're going to take a look at the browser and what you'll see here is my edge router and I have a bunch of stuff set up on this is my actual um, home production router and on 
in my LAN here, if we go to the DHCP details, in the domain field here, you're going to put your domain. So again, yourcompany.com or whatever your uh, FQDN is would go here. Now I already have mine entered in there and obviously for privacy reasons, I have it blurred out. But with that in this field here, instead of using the um, IP4 unified controller field, once I plug the unified switch into my home network, it should appear in this list of devices here. So let me do that right now. I'm going to again cut the video, but I'll show you a picture that the switch is now plugged into my home network um, and booting up or at least in the process of booting. And once it's fully booted, it should show here with pending status and uh, we'll go from there. So I'll be right back. All right, guys. So the switch is almost done booting up and should show up momentarily on this page. Uh, let's see what happens in just a sec. Let me do a refresh. And there we go. Okay, so if you look right down here, here's the switch. Um, it's pending adoption. It's got an address on the uh, same LAN as all my other devices. So if I wanted to adopt this right now, I can just by clicking on the adopt button. So let's go ahead and do that. And you notice the stat status is adopting momentarily it should change to provisioning and then eventually to a connected status. Let's give a little refresh here. And there we go guys. Now it changed to provisioning and the final step to be uh, connected status. So we'll give it a few more seconds. refresh and there you go guys we have a connected status and typically at this point I would go ahead and name the switch and do whatever else but there you go so three different methods at least three different examples shown today actually four methods overall if you think about it you have the UBNT discovery tool as method one the SSH set and form command as method two you have the unified controller IP4 field uh, as method three. And now you just saw uh, DNS resolution uh, method four, all ways to uh, do layer three adoption to inform the devices where the controller is living. So if you like the video, guys, please give it a thumbs up. Be sure to check out some of my other videos up above. Please remember to subscribe, like, and share. And again, I know I keep reiterating it, but please use those Amazon affiliate links to help me raise money to support my No Shave November campaign. As always, I thank you. My name is Tony with Quick Tech Solutions. See you next time.